Well, hello and God bless you. Welcome to BlendCouragesYou.com, where we are here with a word from the Lord to help keep you encouraged to stay on the wall for the Lord. My name is Blend, and as always, I give God praise, glory, and honor for being here with all of you on this episode number 369 of our podcast. Well, BCU family, there are times when the Lord just comes to speak to you personally, and I love when that happens. So let's talk about that. Please take this time to get your Bibles, your notebook, something to write with, and settle on in. Blend encourages you, is coming to you with You Know My Name. That's what's coming up next. All right, everyone, we are going to get into our podcast content momentarily. Right now, I'd love to take a few moments to establish protocol. Whether you are a longtime listener or a first time listener, we are so elated and we give God praise for you choosing BlendCouragesYou.com as a source to get your encouragement through the word of God. And if you have not already done so, I'd love for you to consider making our relationship permanent. How do you do that? Well, let's start with where are you listening from today? Are you on the blendcouragesyou.com site? Perhaps you're on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Podfriend, Podcast Guru, Player FM, Overcast. There are a myriad of different platforms where blendcouragesyou.com can be accessed. So whatever that platform is, wherever that is, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And guess what? That gets you in as a part of the BCU family. Welcome. Hey there, BCU fam. Blend from blendcouragesyou.com here with your podcast on the go. As always, before I get into the content, you know that I need to give you a bit of background, and that is just what we do here at BCU. Background is my thing. (laughs) So for those of you who may be unaware, we do a live Bible study on Thursdays on YouTube, in case you're ever interested, at 8.05 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.05 Central. Not a plug, just letting you know so that you're aware. And in those Bible studies, there has to be some study that goes into what the Lord wants me to speak on. And I have to say that I love those times with Jesus because it's so revealing. The word of God is just a living and breathing and It's amazing when we look at the word of God through the context of what the culture and times were like and the etymology of some of the words and the phraseology, it really helps to illuminate and helps me to understand the word of God better so that I can present it with God's help to all of you. Now, in my personal life, there have been a couple of questions that I've had for the Lord where I was wondering about this and concerned about that and asking about the other thing and just wanted to keep that before the Lord and asking those questions to get some answers and reassurance. And sometimes when we are asking God for things or about things, he doesn't always answer us right away. And sometimes he does that to test our faith. Uh, Sometimes he does that to, as a trial where we're going to count it all joy, he knows how we're going to respond. It is for our admonition, it's for our growth, it's for our way to continue to seek God in all things and to continue to thank him. Are we going to continue to serve him? Are we going to complain versus give God glory and praise and honor or whatever the case may be? So whenever God does something, there is a reason, there's a purpose, there's a plan, and we may not always understand it, but the scriptures tell us in Romans 8 and 28 that it's for our good because we love the Lord and we are the called according to his purpose. So 
as I was studying one of the Psalms, for some reason, and BCU fam, I I don't know if I noted it or not. I, I have to look to see. I ended up in the book of Exodus, and I can't tell you, and, and this was just a day or so ago as of this recording that I was doing the studying. I can't even explain to you how I got to the book of Exodus, what led me there. And if there wasn't something specific that was popping up in the study, I have to attribute it to God. And I'm going to attribute it to God regardless. But certainly uh, it had to be the Lord because that was not my intention at all. And as I was looking in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, there were a couple of verses that stood out to me. Now, it's important when we're reading the word of God to understand the context and to whom God was speaking and all of those things. There are times, though, that God will just light up a phrase or a passage of scripture to give you a reminder, to assure you, to comfort you, to answer, and to let you know what it is that he would like you to know. So, When going to Exodus chapter 33, verse number 11 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. Now, BCU fam, I have studied through uh, some of the book of Exodus, have read through it, um, and I don't recall this scripture off the top of my head. Why it's super significant to me is because of what was said, that God had a relationship with Moses. And the relationship was not because of Moses and his status or his educational level or his wealth or his poise or his skin tone or any of those things. That relationship is because God chose him. Thank you, Jesus. God chose him. And in doing so, he wanted to have a relationship with Moses. And Moses was not a perfect man, but he was a chosen man. And in Moses and all of his imperfections, a perfect God wanted to commune and have a relationship with him. And when you think about that wording that they spoke as a man would speak to a friend, Think about that with us. I know for the people that I'm in contact with, I speak to them, you know, face to face. And sometimes that face to face is obviously, you know, where we're across the table from one another. Sometimes that face to face is on the phone. You know, sometimes that face to face might be on a video call, but you all understand the context of it is just it was the ease of that conversation it was the going back and forth it was um, asking questions and getting answers and just expressing yourself without reservation and uh, being who you are and all of those things and God wants to have that kind of relationship with us Now, he is a holy God and he's a righteous God, so we don't approach him in any haphazard sort of way, yet and still we can have conversations with him. And some of my most favorite conversations with the Lord is when I am driving and just talking to him about random everyday things. Uh, There are times maybe where I am in between tasks at home and we just get to talking about things and I probably do more talking (laughs) and he's doing more of the listening, but just letting the Lord know what's on my mind. And as people come up in my mind, uh, praying for them or asking about people that I haven't seen in a while and, you know, all of those things. And that's the kind of relationship that Moses had with God. And that's what he wants with us. So we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be ashamed. If we mess something up, if we didn't do something properly and and the Lord brings it to our attention in our prayer time or whenever he does, we just want to ask the Lord for forgiveness, repent for that, and then go on. Because the scriptures let us to know in Psalm 103 that as far as the east is from the west, that's as far as he's removed our transgressions from us. So if we go ahead and repent, um, we can just, the Lord just moves it away. And east and west will never meet. That there, It's impossible 
for east and west to ever meet. So when we think about that, God forgets about these things and he moves on. And in that same Psalm 103, it says he will not chide with us. Thank you, Lord, forever, meaning that he's not going to bring up the same things that we've done over and over again in an accusatory manner. Um, that's not what God does. Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Once God forgets about it, it's done. So what we want to do is just remember the lesson from whatever it is that we've done or what we did not do and go on in the Lord. So all of that just goes together, BCU fam. And then the other part of the scripture that stood out to me um, further down in Exodus chapter 33 says <clears throat> that I know thee by name. And that's the C part of verse number 17 in Exodus 33, that God knows Moses by name. And that means that's an intimate relationship. When I say intimate, I mean, that's close. When someone knows you by name, that means that they know all about you. They know what your habits are, your idiosyncrasies, your fears, your ways of doing things, your strengths, your areas of opportunity. They know you. They know you. And I'm sure that uh, you all have someone that knows you that way or someone that you know. Thank you, Jesus. And God knows us by name as well. So he knows all about us because it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. So how we were fashioned, what we think and how we do things, God knows all about that. He knows all about our struggles. He knows all about the areas that we need to surrender to him. He knows where we get wounded the most. He knows the situations that we sometimes have uh, issues or struggles with. He knows where we have the uh, gifts and talents that he has uh, steward given, given us to steward over. He knows our areas of strength because he's given those to us. So God knows all about everything, every intimate detail he knows, and nothing is hidden from him. And not only does he know all of us by name, it's not just us that's listening here today. That goes for everybody. So all of the details, all of the uh, interesting little characteristics, all of those things for every single person in the world. God knows it all because he put it there. He created it. And for those things that have been cultivated by sin, um, being born in sin and shaped in iniquity, all those that he knows all of that too. So what he didn't put there or what has been allowed to be there because of sin, some of the things that we've chosen because of our decision making. Uh, listen, he is a person that can eradicate all of that as well. Ask me how I know. He is a habit breaker. Yes, he is. Uh, he is a struggle take away <laughs> Yes, he is. So he can do all of that. He can do all of that. He just wants a relationship with us. So we don't have to wait to be cleaned up. Uh, we don't have to hang our heads in shame and go away from God because of the things that we have done or said. If you don't know the Lord and the pardoning of your sin, you don't have to wait to stop doing things to be able to have a relationship with God. As a matter of fact, this is the perfect time to do it because he wants you just how you are. Now, once you get to Jesus, once you have repented and you're baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, there will be some changes that will be made so we don't stay as we are. And yes, sometimes there's going to be some a, a bit of tug of war. Yeah, there's going to be that where you want to go back and do certain things, and that's where we rely on the strength of the Lord, and then there are other things that just fall off right away. So it's a beautiful life being in Christ. It really is. And I'm so very grateful and so very thankful for having the opportunity to have Jesus down on the inside and to be able to tell others how <laughs> and what the Lord has done for me and how he saved me. And I'm just so grateful for it. So I'm just grateful, BCU fam. He knows us by name. He knows us by name and he wants to talk to us face to face. 
So for those of you all who are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, just know and continue to talk to the Lord face to face. We are in a time where we cannot afford to stop talking to Jesus about anything. All of the concerns, all of the uncertainty, all of the things that are happening. As uh, my mom and I were speaking a couple of days ago, she said, you know, we are actually living the Bible right now when we see these end times. You know, we've been reading this for so long as we see that the day of the Lord is approaching. And it's not that we didn't see certain things before. We see the intensity of what's happening. And these are just signs, BCU fam, that God is giving us that Jesus is soon to come. And it may be tomorrow. It may be next week. It may be a year or two years from now. We don't know. No one knows that uh, except for uh, the Lord. So our job is to make sure that we stay ready. So this is where we want to constantly check our garments for spots, wrinkles, and blemishes and make sure that we are in the right place with God. And how we do that is through the word of God and keeping our relationship up with him. So speaking to him face to face and just thanking the Lord that he's a friend of ours. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And that he knows us by name and that he loves us. And that is is my message for you today. Thank you, Jesus. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you today, Lord, we want to thank you for encouraging our hearts and for reminding us, Lord, that we are a friend of yours. We thank you that as you have shown the disciples that you were a friend of theirs, as they had a relationship with you, we have that same privilege and we thank you for that today, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for helping us to hear your voice in the areas in which we are following your directions and doing what you say to do. And thank you for us hearing you for the areas where we may need to do things better in, where we may need to let some things go. Whatever the case may be, give us the grace and strength to be able to do that, Lord, because we can do all things through you that strengthens us, and we thank you for that as well. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will remember all of those who are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Help us to continue to walk up right before you and to be ready for you when you do appear, Lord Jesus, in however way you do that. And for those who don't know you, Lord Jesus, it is my prayer that you will speak to their hearts and minds even now, Lord, and help them to realize that it's time to give their life to you. We thank you for directing them, Lord, in the way that they should go. Thank you for directing Directing them, Lord Jesus, to Acts chapters 1 and 2, to read how to get the Holy Ghost and that you convict their hearts so that they know, Lord, that it's time to repent. Thank you for giving them a place to be baptized in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord, for going on to give them the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the initial sign being speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. So we thank you for taking care of all of that, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for just continuing to lead and guide us, to direct and protect us, and to help us to be the children that you have called for us to be. It's in Jesus' name that we thank you. Let every heart say Amen. Well, BCU fam, as always, I would love to know what your thoughts are about our conversation today. So wherever you're listening from, there should be a place to comment. And if not, you can always just head over to blendcouragesyou.com. There is a comment section there. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Let's go there and let's continue our conversation. Well, BCU family, it is time for me to sign off. Once again, this is Blen from BlenCouragesYou.com here. I want to thank you all so much for your prayerful support and for tuning in. And Lord will, and until the next time we are together, may our awesome God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, and give you all peace as you stay on the wall. <laughs>